Hello everyone, this is the, uh, I don't know how many videos I made so far, but this is going to be the video detailing the fourth kinematics equation, the last one. It's the Vs squared equals Vi squared plus 2A delta x. Um, if you're looking for some easy way f for that, I'm going to help you uh, remember this. If you're looking for some way that this makes sense, some analogy, it really doesn't. The only way you get this is through um, mathematical computations and proofs. Uh, so this video may or may not help you understand it better. It, in fact, it probably won't help you understand it better. It may help you remember better how to um, come up with it on a test if you need it. But you may feel like skipping this video, and if you do, I don't blame you because it might not help. I'm going to flat out say that. But for those of you who want to see where this equation comes from, I will continue. Okay, so we're going to start off with our first equation, delta x, with our, f our first kinematics equation, delta x equals, wow, that's a very thick red, equals one half vi, or v, rather vf plus vi times t, right? You know that one. And if we, I mean, I'm not going to go through all the algebra in depth, because, I mean, you've taken Algebra 2, uh, at, yeah, all of you are in at least Algebra 2, I think. If you multiply the whole thing by 2, then that comes to 1, and we have 2 delta x. If we divide everything by this, we put this right here, um, and then we just we kind of solve for t, we end up with t equals 2x. I'm just going to write x from now on, not delta x, because it's just easier, especially with the mouse and not the pad, over vf plus vi. And, I mean, that's just how you solve for t. If you don't believe me, you can go back later on, you can pause the video, maybe check my algebra. But you can trust me that that's accurate. Um, then our other kinematics equation, I'll write it in green, was uh, the final velocity is the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And, well, we have time, right? We have time right here. So let's plug this in. Let's stick this in for t right there. So we get vf. And actually, let's do two steps at once. I'm also going to subtract this vi right here, and I'm going to put it over on this side. So we've got minus vi. Just say this some time later. Equals a times two x. I'll go to two x over v f plus v i, and we're getting really, really close to the end. I mean, this is probably gonna be a fastish video. Um, if we multiply everything by, if we multiply this side, v f minus v i times vf plus vi. Sorry, it takes a while for me to write with this thing. Then we get, I mean, this cancels out of the bottom. So we end up with 2ax. And then if you just um, foil this, take my word for it, or pause the video and figure it out yourself. And I encourage you to occasionally pause the video, make sure that you can come up with the same thing that I'm doing. But if it's vf minus vi times vf plus vi, you end up with vf squared minus vi squared equals 2, this is an a by the way, a, I'll go back to writing delta x, just to clear confusion, 2a delta x, and then when you add, um, if you add this vi, if you add vi squared to both sides, you end up with vf 
squared equals bi squared plus 2a delta x. So, I mean, it's not really clean or pretty per se, um, but it will come in handy uh, if you get questions like, for example, they might say that if you drop something, so if you're dropping it, it the initial velocity is zero, right? So that's zero. So we can actually almost like cross that out. And the acceleration we'd have is negative 9.8. We know that much. Um, if you drop, if you're dropping it from a building, and when it reaches the ground, it's traveling at say 19.8. Uh, crap, this is pretty pathetic. Uh, actually, no, I don't want to make it that. That's too too clean. Hold on a sec. Um, I don't know. Let's make it 36 point... I mean, uh, no. Let's make, uh, 39.2. I like that. Thir it's a 9, by the way, 39.2. I think this works out, right? Um, er, ah, crap, screw it. But basically, say you get the, how fast it's moving when it hits the ground. I don't feel like doing a bunch of math, but doing a bunch of actual computations right now. Say they give you how fast it's moving when it hits the ground, and they tell you that you drop it. Well, now you know the final velocity, the acceleration, and the initial velocity, so now, they're going to ask you how tall was the building. This, I'm not going to go into the details of this. Um, if you need help with plugging things in and solving for the variable, solving for x, I'll help you with it. Um, but I'm not going to do that all in the video because you guys should know how to solve a simple equation like this. Because, I mean, you're not doing any kind of crazy solving here, it really is just plugging in numbers and then dividing and adding by stuff. It's no complex stuff. There's no quadratic equation or anything like that. Um, so we've gone over the four uh, kinematics equations and basically uh, given any three variables you can find the other two. So if you have initial velocity and final velocity and acceleration, you can find the time and the distance traveled. Um, all, all that good shit. Um, I'm just going to kind of end it there. Um, my next video I'm probably going to... Uh, I'm going to be moving into vectors soon, but before I do that I'm going to create a video kind of just explaining what sine and cosine really are. Because I know you, you probably know how to use them by now. You know that one's kind of like the vertical part and one's the y component and x component and all that crap. But I want you to understand what they are, where they come from, and uh, how we might use them. I'm also going... And then the next video, the one after that, I'm going to try to explain vectors in a way that might look a little bit cleaner than the crazy way that some of the physics teachers try to teach us with making T-charts and all that crap. So, I'll see you then.